Good afternoon, traders and investors. Will back here with another one coming to you with a Wednesday market recap. Hope everybody had a very beautiful day. And in today's markets, guys, well, it was an action-packed event, especially with NVIDIA earnings after the close and the rest of the markets here throughout the day, guys. Little bit of red and the little bit of red was really started off early in the afternoon around two o'clock when we got the FOMC meeting minutes. Now, this is nothing new. It's just basically a summary of what happened at the last FOMC meeting roughly three weeks, four weeks ago at this point. But the market's did did take that opportunity to have a little bit of a sell-off here. Nothing major, but just a little bit of selling into the close. And that was quickly recaptured after we got NVIDIA's earnings. And NVIDIA earnings, once again, pretty much smashed it out of the park here, guys. So in today's video, we're going to recap a few things together. Number one, we're going to go over two earnings that I have prepared for you guys. Number one is, of course, going to be NVIDIA. And the second one is going to be Elf Beauty, another one of my favorite growth stocks here, guys. So we're going to recap those earnings and then dive into technical analysis on our major uh, stock market indexes, see how those are shaping up, and also on our big tech names and see how they got through the day today and see if there's any opportunities to be had across the rest of big tech. And then lastly, guys, we're going to take a very brief look into my portfolio for a few updated trades that I made today, but going to keep it relatively short. So without further ado, guys, let's get right into today's video. Spy down about 0.29% on the day. QQQ almost roughly flat, about 0.02%. Financials, though, taking a little bit of a bath here, down about 0.57%, but healthcare and semiconductor we're kind of there to lift the weight up back in the market. So all in all, guys, fairly balanced market. No real big red flags as of yet. All the one day relative, guys, you can see that even better pretty much on the heat map. Very, very mixed market as a whole, guys. You can see many, many more, many more names were red than green. But for the most part, big tech did a great job in holding up these markets. Google, Apple, uh, and NVIDIA slightly down here on the day. But Meta and Microsoft doing their best to uphold the rest of the Magnificent Seven. In terms of healthcare, guys, another mixed day on healthcare, even though the outperformance for the most part was in this sector versus the the rest banks not having that great of a day and the bottom half of the market as well guys really not having that good of a day at all guys very very mixed market today but a lot more red than green and you can see that even better on the one day relative performance guys most of your major indexes on the day were ending in the red but that's okay we've been kind of predicting this right we've had a very nice couple weeks of rally and eventually we will get these little bit of daily consolidation events and those are just very healthy pullbacks in the context of gorgeous weekly uptrends guys so I wouldn't start to get too nervous of the market really falling off ever so slightly just yet. And even in the after hours, guys, after NVIDIA earnings here, we have a nice little boost in the after hours. We'll see if the markets can hold up those gains into the tomorrow session. So without further ado, guys, let's get right into our company earnings today. And we're going to cover NVIDIA, of course, because it is the largest one. Now, moving on first, guys, just as a little preamble here, NVIDIA absolutely crushed it, guys. Now, that was never the question. We knew they were going to crush their current quarter. The, um, the expectation, though, was could they continuously beat already very high expectations? And as a matter of fact, they absolutely did. So very happy for NVIDIA, crushed the current quarter, and maintained their substantially exciting guidance for the remainder of the year. Now let's get into some numbers, shall we? So take a look at this beat on EPS, guys. Huge beat on EPS by about 9%, and a very nice beat on revenue as well by about 6%. No surprise there, guys. We know it was going to be a blowout quarter for NVIDIA, and they just don't disappoint as of lately. So let's take a look at some of the the, um, news headlines here. NVIDIA shares pass $1,000 for the first time on AI-driven sales surge. Yes, in the after hours right now, guys, NVIDIA is finally trading above that $1,000 mark, closing roughly in the after hours now around $1,007. Very, very uh, nice performance by them. Not quite the expected move. The expected move was relatively, um, you know, for about 7% to the upside, 7.9%. They almost got there, but not quite, right? So really not a blowout past the expected move. Now, moving into the article, its strong results on Wednesday suggest that demand for the AI chips NVIDIA makes remains robust. And Jensen Huang was saying this on the earnings call, guys. He said that the demand was far still outpacing supply. Very, very interesting earnings call from the CEO. So if you guys haven't had a chance to listen to that, I highly suggest taking maybe 20, 25 minutes out of your time tonight and listening to the segment where Jensen Huang is talking about the business. It's only about a 20, 25 minute segment, but it'll help you understand 
understand the nature of the business a lot better. Now, the CEO Jensen Huang said the company would begin to see revenue from its next generation AI chip called Blackwell later this year. So obviously, guys, we already know that NVIDIA already has these data center chips up and running. Blackwell is the newest and um, the newest and fastest edition of that, which is going to be released in about three, four months time. Now, let's continue. NVIDIA also said it was splitting its stock 10 to 1. So I didn't want to say too much, guys, but this was a very big headline on the day, guys splitting the stock 10 to 1, and that will be effective pretty much on June the 7th. So 10 to 1 split, depending on what NVIDIA share price is at that time, just divide that number by 10. So the stock price will become cheaper, but all in all, stock splits are usually not a bullish event because it really doesn't change anything for the market cap, right? It's the same thing as if you have $100 with one $100 bill or 520s, it's still $100, right? So, but still, nonetheless, guys, at least it will provide an opportunity for everybody that doesn't have access maybe to fraction shares for them to be able to pick up round shares because not all brokerages offer fractional shares. Now, moving on further, NVIDIA said it expected sales of $28 billion in the current quarter, which was above the guidance. The guidance was for 26.61, so coming in above the expectations once again. The chipmaker reported net income for the quarter ended April 28 of $14.88 billion on, um, on their $26 billion in revenue, guys. That is 57% net margins. That is absolutely ridiculous for any company making a product, guys. 57% margins to the bottom line is absolutely fantastic. Far, far, far better than anybody in that same industry. Now, in the past year, NVIDIA sales have skyrocketed as companies such as Google, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, and OpenAI buy billions of dollars at NVIDIA graphics processing units, which are advanced and pricey chips required for developing and deploying AI applications, of course. Now, a big highlight this quarter was Meta's announcement of Llama 3, their latest large language model, which used 24,000. H100 GPUs. That is absolutely crazy, guys. Tesla, for example, uses 35,000 of them, but Meta as well, 24,000. These numbers are ridiculous, guys. Each one of these um, H100s costs about $30,000. So you can imagine the amount of capital that big tech is outlaying on these things. Um, the, uh, so the CFO added that large cloud providers make about a mid 40% of NVIDIA's data center revenue. So all the big boys are the ones responsible for the purchases of these chips, pretty much to the tune of 40% of all of the demand. Now, even as the company reports a tripling or more of its business, Huang said that the company's next generation AI GPU called Blackwell would lead to even more growth. So that was what people were worried about. Can the company continue growing? And Jensen Huang said yes. Now, in terms of the refresh cycle, guys, he he did tackle the refresh cycle. A few analysts were wondering, well, guys, how often are you going to release these new chips, right? And he said pretty much once every year. So kind of like your traditional uh, retail-based graphics cards that you and I may have in our computers. Well, for these uh, data, specific, data uh, center processing units specifically, the refresh cycle will also likely be about one year before releasing a new iteration. Now, NVIDIA also highlighted strong sales of its networking parts. This is very, very, very bullish, guys, which are increasingly important as companies build clusters of tens of thousands of chips that need to be connected. So networking of the chips together. NVIDIA provides that service as well. NVIDIA said that it had $3.2 billion in networking revenue, primarily its InfiniBand products, which was over three times higher than sales in the early um, in the year earlier period. So InfiniBand, guys, if you don't know, it's just a method of connecting all these different thousands and thousands of chips into one single network. And NVIDIA provides that service, obviously, and they call it InfiniBand. Now, gaming revenue as well, because they still do that. Let's not forget, right? So gaming revenue was up a healthy 18% during the quarter to $2.65 billion, which NVIDIA attributed to strong demand. Very good, guys. The company is operating on all... Uh, on all firing on all cylinders here all lines of business moving in the right direction can't be happier for them congratulations to nvidia they just continue raising the bar time and time again now let's take a look at these numbers guys right revenue up 18 percent quarter over quarter so with such a huge bump in revenue you may expect their costs to also be ballooning right Nope, their costs only up 10%, guys. So even though they're expanding revenue so, so, so aggressively, their costs are not increasing as fast, which 
gives them a heavy boost in net income. Look at this boost in net income quarter over quarter, 21% quarter over quarter boost in net income. That is absolutely fantastic, guys. And another little highlight I wanted to show you guys announced, they announced BYD, XPeng, GACs, Aon Hyper, Neuro, and others have chosen the next generation NVIDIA Drive Thor platform, which is NVIDIA's version of full self-driving. Think of exactly what Tesla is trying to do. Well, NVIDIA is doing the exact same thing. So they will be a big competitor to Tesla. And you can see most of all the popular Chinese brands are signing up to use NVIDIA's drive platform instead, right? They will all be featured on the Blackwell GPU architecture. Very, very, very bullish for them as a whole, guys. Take a look at the cash and cash equivalents just to show you guys. Company is extremely strong. $31 billion in assets. Completely ridiculous. In terms of their debts outstanding, only relatively, you know, let's call it $11, $12 billion. So way, way, way more cash than they have debt. So the company's financial position is fine, in my opinion. And then look at this free cash flow number, guys. Fifth billion dollars in free cash flow in one single quarter. This company is doing such, such, such amazing things, guys. And the growth just won't stop. Take a look. EPS expansion curve really getting underway here through 2027. Revenue expansion curve will be absolutely massive for the next three years as well. Such a glorious company, guys. And even in terms of your, um, you're right, in terms of the financials, as I just showed you, a very stark contrast to the company NVIDIA was before. Now you can see they have so much cash on their hands now, guys, building that cash pile up over the last four quarters, looking extremely good. And another record quarter of free cash flow. This is last quarter. This quarter, I just showed you guys about $15 billion in free cash flow. And if I move myself over here, look at these margins. Look at this margin expansion, guys. Now in the mid 50% range. Absolutely phenomenal performance from NVIDIA, right? So how do we stand in terms of valuation? Because that obviously matters with the stock around $1,000 right now, right? Well, let's go through a few of the valuation metrics, guys, here. So if we take in consideration their 2024 PE ratio at $1,000, it gives them a forward PE of about 39.8. Now, let's put that on a growth denominator, right? So if we consider a GPS growth rate of 20%, I'm doing 20% because it's very conservative because a lot of people are saying the growth curve for NVIDIA might just be peaking out. Now, Wall Street still has us here at about 33%. I will literally cut that by 1.5x. I'm going with a conservative 20%. And if we go with only 20% EPS expansion, it gives them a peg ratio of two. Now, two is not that bad, guys. It's not cheap, but it's also not expensive. But if we take the Wall Street estimates, the full 33% over the next couple of years, guys, well, we get a peg ratio of 1.2. Neither of these two numbers, guys, are that bad at all, right? 1.2 obviously looks a lot better, but if Wall Street is wrong, that's why we go with the more conservative event, uh, the more conservative number, and we still end up with a peg ratio of only two. So all in all, guys, the company is still decently priced. Is it a very good bargain right now? No. But is there still some room for the stock price to appreciate to the upside? Absolutely. $1,100, $1,200, in my opinion, would not be that far-fetched. So tremendous earnings from NVIDIA. Congratulations to all NVIDIA bulls out there. Now, guys, let's move into our second company earnings, and we're going to be covering Elf Beauty, another, another one of my favorite companies right here. So Elf Beauty actually had a little bit of a mixed quarter, but their numbers for this quarter was fantastic. The problem was the future guidance was a little bit light. And you guys know this, how these quarterly earnings have been going so far, right, guys? The companies can smash the current quarter. Quarter, but if they give anything other than perfect guidance for the future, their stock price tends to take a hit. And that's exactly what happened to Elf Beauty in the initial reaction to uh, their earnings in the after hours. You can see the company went down pretty much almost about 10, 12% before recapturing a lot of their gains when Wall Street realized, well, it's really not that bad. Company is still excessively strong. So let's move into their numbers directly now, guys. So in terms of their EPS, look at this beat on EPS, guys. 59, let's call it about 60% beat on EPS. Absolutely ridiculous, guys, right? And a very nice beat on revenue as well by about 10%. This company, guys, is growing so, so, so fantastically. Take a look at this EPS expansion curve. So beautiful. And take a look at this revenue expansion curve as well. Extremely gorgeous. They're pretty much going to double their revenue by 2026. They just brought in a billion dollars. Yes, this is the first time in the company's history that they brought in over a billion dollars in revenue for a fiscal year. So very, very good performance by them. Now let's jump into some of the articles. 
Elf Beauty posts the first billion dollar year, but shares fall on weaker than expected guidance. So Elf Beauty posted its first billion dollar fiscal year, growing sales by 77%. Wow, right? The company blew past Wall Street's estimates, but it anticipates its growth will moderate during the current fiscal year and be slower than analysts had expected. But slower does not mean slow. It just means slower than expected. And we'll get into those numbers in a little bit here. So the Eyes, Lip, Face company, that's what ELF stands for, right? Eyes, Lips, and Face, known for its viral marketing and prowess in winning over young customers, issued guidance that came in lower than analysts had forecasted. How? Now, let's take a look, guys, at that expectation, right? Elf Beauty has been on a tear over the past year, posting sales gains in the high double-digit percentages quarter after quarter as consumers flock to its low-priced beauty products, either through its own website or at retailers such as Walmart and Target. The one thing that I love the best about Elf Beauty, guys, is that they have very little costs, right? They don't have brick-and-mortar stores. The only place that you can buy their products is either online. Oops, is the sound a bit too loud? My bad. The only place that you can buy their products is pretty much through Walmart or Target or online, right? They don't have any of their own stores. So the costs to run this business are relatively low. Now, in a statement, the CEO of Elf Beauty said he believes the company is still in the early innings of its growth story and expects more com to come in cosmetics, skincare, and in international markets. And I do agree, guys. These guys are eating legacy beauty companies lunch. They are eating Estee Lauder, they are eating Ulta Beauty, and they're even starting to eat into L'Oreal. Their market share continues to increase, and the way that they do their marketing, and the fact that they're targeting the Gen Z consumers, guys, who are going to be the consumers of the future, we are currently seeing a generational shift in spending um, in the beauty category, and ELF stands to be the clear winner of this. Now, the company expects to grow at a slower pace than Wall Street anticipated. Here's the reason for the initial drop. A little bit light on the guidance. ELF expects next... Whoa, we got a big snowstorm. I made a big rainstorm here, guys. So Elf expects next sales to be between 1.323 billion and 1.25 billion, which will be an increase of 20 to 22%. That is below the 27.4% consensus. So slightly below, right? I know it's about 20% below here, but still very good growth, 20 to 22%, guys. Still double digits, still above 20%. Now, the company is forecasting adjusted net income to be between 187 million and 191 million. That is pretty much their net income and it translates to earnings per share of between 3.2 and 3.25 per share below the estimate here of 3.51 so there is your 10 percent little bit of soft guidance uh decline here on the eps which is a reason that the stock dropped about 10 percent in the after hours before quickly resuming course now moving on to the few more highlights guys you're not going to spend too much time over this i promise so here's the comments from the ceo in Q4, we grew net sales by 71% and expanded our market share by 325 basis points. That is huge, guys, gaining three and a quarter percent market share in Q4 alone. That is massive, marking our 21st consecutive quarter of net sales and market share growth. As we look ahead, we believe we are still in the early innings of unlocking the full potential we see for Elf Beauty across cosmetics, skincare, and international markets. So nothing but bullish things from the CEO. Now let's take a brief look at some of their numbers, guys. This is what I wanted to highlight, right? Because the company makes so much money, we have to understand how much money do they bring to the bottom line. So you can see net sales are very good. What is the cost of those sales? Very light, about 30%. Very, very good. It gives them a gross profit of about 70, 72% gross profit margins. That is fantastic. Where do they spend all of those profits, guys? They spend them in marketing, right? So your SGNA, selling general and administrative expenses, most of this is marketing. You can see they spend about $575 million in marketing. It's normal. That is their bread and butter. That is how they grow their brand. As their brand exponentially grows, eventually they won't need to have to do as much marketing as they are right now. But when you're a viral brand, you need to be reinvesting into more viral ads, more partnerships with more influencers. And that's really how you do most of the damage, right? So it's very, very good for Elf Beauty. Now, in terms of the valuation, well, in terms of the valuation, guys, the company is not doing too bad at all. If you take a look down here, guys, just want to show you one thing in terms of the company's health, right? Company's health is very, very good. They used to have a lot of debt in relation to their cash flow, but now 
that they're profitable, guys. Not too much debt. Only about $300 million in debt, about $100 million in cash and cash equivalents. And they did have a positive um, most recent quarter, right, in terms of free cash flow. It's not there yet. But just to say, they really don't have that much debt at all here, guys, right? Very, very manageable debt position, in my opinion. So let's get into a few of the numbers. You guys obviously know that Elf Beauty has been coming steadily, steadily down here, right? Weekly downtrend in motion. Just trying to find that monthly higher low for further trend continuation. And I really do believe that trend will continue. So we're kind of finding a bottoming process right around the current prices. I still believe, guys, anything a low, anything below 150 is such a good deal for this company. And the numbers would tend to agree as well. So taking into consideration, they're growing uh, revenue at 22% per year. And they're growing EPS at 23% per year, both of those through 2027. It gives them a forward PE at $155, which is their after hour share price right now, but $155 gives them a forward PE of about 43.5. On its own, that number seems a little bit high, but when we give this as an expression of their growth rate, and I went a little bit light as well, guys. I'm tapering back the expectations just in case Wall Street is wrong. Wall Street has this pegged at around 27, 28%. I went a little bit lighter just so we can have a little bit of margin of safety, right? It gives them a peg ratio of about 1.89. That's really not that bad. Anything under two is a fairly good deal, especially for this company. Still, guys, currently, you know, roughly about 31% from the all-time highs if we really pull back again into this 150 140 zone such a juicy long-term buying opportunity for a company that's just going to continue growing and continue just taking market share from your legacy cosmetic brands so very very happy with this result as a whole that's pretty much everything we had for our two earnings calls guys now let's jump right into our indexes and we'll do these quickly guys because nothing much has changed right so in terms of the spy well we're now up in the after hours we'll see how that translates into tomorrow's trading but as a whole guys still it ain't very healthy daily uptrend your daily higher low is still right here 527.39 if we fall below there daily downtrend is started and then we're going to just be in very healthy weekly consolidation the weekly bulls have tons of space to work with here to set that weekly higher low and rise in the event that we lose this little bit of daily trend formation right but if we just continue higher guys just expect this daily trend to march on forward higher we're now clearly above the all-time highs so this little first little level of fallback right here 523.60 could maybe be the last step that the bulls uh, give up into before maybe resuming the trend higher all in all no red flags the bull still well in control controlling the monthly controlling the weeklies now at this point as well big engulfing move just looking for the weekly uptrend reset and now full control of the daily no red flags now moving into qqqs qqqs largely the same right so qqqs still in a very gorgeous daily uptrend right now any move lower just gonna be looking for that higher low anything above four 50, let's call it just going to be a daily higher low for further trend continuation if for every reason we roll over into a daily downtrend no biggie guys you guys know the drill the bulls on the weekly have tons of space to set a weekly higher low for further trend continuation the bulls are in full control of every single time frame if we start losing a little bit of ground here guys 447 previous all-time high resistance right 447 down to this little pocket right here maybe 441 this little juicy pocket could be the extent of the drawdown here for that weekly pullback into another leg of buying moving on to healthcare give me a quick second Man, it's really coming down outside, guys. Sorry if you can hear that through my windows. It's pouring out there. So moving into XLF financials. Financials, however, dangerously in jeopardy of losing the daily higher lows. If we were to lose this level tomorrow, guys, it would be a daily downtrend. And at that point, your weekly consolidation would be underway. That's fine, though. The bulls do have tons of space, guys. Target this first area, right? 4120. 4120 is going to be a crucial, crucial level to protect. Prior uh, resistance right here should be acting as support. Your 26 moving average on the daily is right there as well. And if we go out to the weekly, look, that's probably going to be confluence with your weekly 12 EMA. Weekly uptrend is nice and healthy right now. Just expecting a weekly higher low for further trend continuation. We're coming back into prior uh, resistance, right? This big red box, all-time high resistance should be acting as support now. Really no uh, trouble for the bulls right now. No, no, no big red flags. Just a very healthy pullback. Now moving on to healthcare. Healthcare as well, looking fairly decent on the day. 0.18% to the upside. And your daily uptrend simply continues on health. Excuse me, healthcare as well, right? Daily higher lows right here, 145.50. If ever we some for some which reason lose that, daily downtrend is started. Keep an eye on this level of support right here, this yellow line, 144.82. Your 12 EMA is right there as well. Could be a nice little touch 
and then possibly resume. And that little bit of drawdown would just be looking for a weekly higher low to get this weekly uptrend back, right? We were in a weekly downtrend. The bulls are putting in a nice engulfing move, creating a lot of space. So any pullback just probably going to be for that weekly higher low to get us back into weekly uptrend mode. The bulls still in full control of this monthly chart as well, right? So monthly full control, weekly looking good and daily bulls in full control. Moving into semiconductors, semiconductors up 0.82% on the day. However, tomorrow, if NVIDIA holds up gains, we will probably see a blowout, right? And probably going to come above our all-time high here, 238.67. So very healthy daily uptrend here, guys, right? Continuation is most likely if NVIDIA holds up the gains. If we continue to the upside, guys, well, then any move up, as soon as we stop that move up, just once again, going to be looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation. If we end up all the way up here in the 240s, well, then just look for your previous all-time highs. This level, this level again, to be acting as future support could be something like this. Breakout, retest, and the future run on semiconductors. No red flags whatsoever, just extremely bullish on this, uh, on this industry as a whole, right? This was a weekly downtrend. The bulls have now fully, fully, fully engulfed. So if we do blast beyond the all-time highs and then pull back in the coming weeks, just going to be looking for a healthy the weekly retracement for further push to the upside. No real red flags in semiconductors as a whole. As a matter of fact, there are a few of them that still represent good opportunities, such as AMD that have been uh, kept relatively low, right, in comparison to other ones that are at their all-time highs. We don't really have any major uh, big semiconductor earnings until AVGO. AVGO is still roughly a few weeks away. That's going to be a very big one. But for the most part, all of the rest of them are already past us by now. Now, moving into the Russell, the Russell down about 0.84%. Russell not having the best of days today, but that's okay. It can afford to have a little bit of a pullback here. Russell, daily downtrend is commenced, right? Loss of the daily higher lows right now. We do have the daily downtrend, which means that the weekly consolidation is underway. Thankfully, the bulls have enough space, right? Created a lot of space. Just going to be looking for that weekly higher low for a potential restart at attacking this 212 area. So the bulls were not able to get it done. We'll see, obviously, how tomorrow opens. If tomorrow is a huge day to the upside, I will eat my words and we'll have another attempt at here. But if daily consolidation continues and we head into a little bit of a dip cycle here, maybe starting to tag this 202 weekly 12 EMA, could be a nice area for the bulls to regain some steam and then make another attempt to try and smash this really, really brutal 212 area that was previous support big resistance that is what's really holding us back right now but all in all no real red flags to speak of and lastly our dow jones index so the dow jones not looking too bad on the day right still trying to find its daily higher low daily higher low is right here 39,400. If we can get the daily higher low above that, we're kind of tagging the 12 EMA right now. So if tomorrow is a good day for the Dow Jones, no harm, no foul, just a resumption of the daily uptrend. However, if tomorrow's markets are red for some which reason, and we take back too much of this move, it could open up the door for a little bit of a daily downtrend on the Dow Jones. Not too big of an issue here, guys. The weekly bulls have tons of space, anything above pretty much 37,700, just going to be for that weekly higher low for further trend continuation. So all in all, even though we're getting a little bit of retracement here, I really don't think it's that big of a deal guys the bulls have a nice juicy area of support between these two lines right here i can pretty much draw um them right here right so we have this one right here and we have these guys down here i oops i we have these guys down here so i do believe this little pocket right here will be the extent maybe of the weekly pullback before further trend increases. So looking very, very juicy on the Dow Jones. Now moving into our big tech name, shall we? So looking into Apple today. Apple on the day, having a little bit of a pullback, but that's okay, guys. Apple is in such, such, such a gorgeous daily uptrend. Like, look at this beautiful daily uptrend. Daily higher lows right here, 189. And we're just looking for the daily higher low for further trend continuation, right? Where is next Apple resistance? 195. And then it's going to be our all-time high right here at about 199. So if you were to draw a little bit of a box, right, you can say that your resistance box is pretty much right up here. And we're coming into that quickly. So if ever Apple can't get it done and has to get a little little bit more momentum, right? We may be seeing a little bit of rollover on Apple. If that happens and we get a daily downtrend, just going to be looking for the eventual weekly higher low and get that weekly trend change. We've been stuck in this weekly downtrend for a while now, and now the bulls have finally put in an engulfing move, but they have not changed the trend yet. We still need to set the weekly higher low and get the weekly trend change going. So if ever Apple decides to pull back here, could be a very juicy opportunity to try and snipe the weekly higher low before we maybe move on and tackle the all-time highs. Don't forget, Apple has one of its most important investor conference days about the mid-June. I believe it's June 14th is their um, investor presentation day where they're set to release a few new 
products that will have AI capabilities. So very, very, uh, very, very excited to see what Apple has cooked up for us. Now moving into AMD, AMD is likely going to be one of the beneficiaries of the NVIDIA rally tomorrow. As a matter of fact, they already started rallying in the after hours. You can see this move right here after NVIDIA earnings. They were able to get, uh, to get back, you know, about 2%. They had lost it during the day, but recapturing it in the after hours. We'll see how they open up tomorrow. AMD though, looking very, very healthy right now, guys. Daily uptrend is started, still just looking to progress uh, this daily uptrend further right now. We tried to get it done today, but a little bit of a double top. So depending on how tomorrow opens, guys, if we open higher, daily uptrend is still underway. And then we'll be looking to really tackle this area right here, right? The 175, 175 up to about 180. This little pocket of resistance is gonna be the one that might hold the bulls back. This is pretty much the top end of your previous range of resistance from back here in the month of February. Right, so 175, 180 is going to be that likely next stopping point for the bulls. But all in all, guys, the bulls have now put in a decent amount of space on the weekly as well, right? Weekly downtrend, the bulls have now engulfed. So we're looking for them to continue this weekly move as high as possible. If we can get up into this 180 range right here and then get rejected, gives us a great opportunity to gather strength back down here and reset this daily uptrend later on, maybe in the month of June. Looking very, very juicy on AMD. I'm still a big fan of picking up AMD, you know, as close as possible to to 155 but at this point guys anything under 160 160 down to 140 such a juicy pocket to be picking up some shares for that eventual take back and uh, move back into the all-time highs later on in the year because i do believe amd is going to be one of the ones to watch this year they're releasing their first um, competitive product to what nvidia is doing right now for data centers and that is coming out this quarter so they're going to start realizing more and more of those revenues and more and more of those profits from their data center business but still have a lot of catching up to do um, in relation to nvidia of course give me another quick sec Are we back? We're back. Perfect. So moving on to Amazon right now. So Amazon not looking too bad here, down about 0.01%. Still in a daily downtrend is Amazon, right? So we're still in this daily downtrend mode. How do you know we're going to break it, guys? Well, we need to get a break of 186 uh, 186.50 pretty much. If we can get over and above that engulfing move, we can then reset the daily uptrend and then you will have your weekly higher lows set on for another leg of weekly rally. We're pretty much coming into the in the lows right now, guys. Weekly 12 EMA was already touched this week and they've done a great job of holding up this weekly 12 EMA this whole time since the rally started in November and even prior, right? Even since March of 2023. So Amazon loves this weekly 12 EMA and we just tapped it again. So it could be a likely scenario where we do see Amazon simply just rebound and reset the daily uptrend this whole time that it's been dipping. I've been saying that 180 is a very decent buying opportunity, which is why I've been writing short puts around the 180 mark, looking very, very healthy. If for every reason, guys, we break down even further on Amazon, let's say we just continue this daily downtrend. Well, you guys can see this massive area of support on the screen, right? 177 down to about 165. I know it's a big range, but just to say that's where all of your longer term bulls are sitting because that is your previous all-time high that took literally almost a year to break on the monthly. We're now above that. So in my opinion, it'll be very tough for the bears to break through this to the downside. So any move into this zone could be known as a buying opportunity. Your long-term bulls have your backs. Now moving into Google, Google just you know, down about 0.86%, but it really doesn't look like much in relation to the size of this move, right? Gorgeous move, daily uptrend still underway right now. Any pullback as we have right now, just looking for a daily higher low for that further trend continuation. Target this area right here as maybe a zone of confluence, right? You have your previous line of resistance, 174, and coming up on this 12 EMA. This could be the level where the bulls react from before maybe starting another daily leg higher. If for ever it's reason, Google just gives it all up and starts a little bit of a daily downtrend. Well, just gonna be looking for a weekly higher low here, guys. The weekly is looking so gorgeous on Google right now, but they can afford a little bit of sideways consolidation and nobody would really bat an eye. Still looking extremely bullish, a little bit too rich for me to buy up here. I would really need to start to see uh, more of a discount here on the weekly. I would be a fan if we can get back to this. I know we were just here last week here, guys, but in the grand, in the grand scheme of how quickly the SPY and QQQs have recovered back to all-time highs now. I would be looking for some Google shares. If we do dip down below uh, 170 again, that'll be a likely area where I start playing this one a bit more aggressively. Moving on to Meta now. Meta also up about 0.68% today. You really can't tell on the chart just because Meta just 
looking kind of what's not it's not that it's looking weak right it's just it's not this right so meta's kind of just been doing a whole lot of nothing the past five days daily uptrend is still in motion still haven't lost the lows right kind of double bottoming here at the lows so the bulls are still in control they still do have a chance at resetting this daily uptrend however we're battling with a few things here guys we obviously have this 482 line of solid resistance above us and we're above the moving and we're below the moving averages as well you can see how much meta's been struggling to try and get above these moving averages so even if meta gives this up and sets a daily downtrend not too big of a deal here guys just going to be looking to reset the weekly into an uptrend so we're not we weren't able to, bre to breach this level right here 482 right big level of resistance couldn't get it done on the first attempt right couldn't get it done on the first attempt so maybe we need to get a little bit more momentum down here around 450 before making that second attempt again right but all in all i will be looking for meta if we do get that little bit of a dip down here in a 450 that is where i'm going to be playing this one a few different ways probably some short puts 440 430 and also i'm probably going to be doing some call options on meta maybe 6 12 18 months out if we can get this because i am expecting the stock to just mount above the levels and continue moving higher for the rest of the year now moving on to Microsoft. Microsoft also not looking too, too bad here today, up 0.34%. Another almost new all-time high day for Microsoft, right? No red flags whatsoever. Gorgeous daily uptrend right now. Any move lower, just going to be looking for a higher low, anything above 418.35. Daily higher low for further trend continuation. Microsoft on an absolute tear right now, and we're not quite above these all-time highs what i'd like to see from microsoft tomorrow into friday is really mount clearly above these and then come down and sit on them this little retest trade right if we can break above our all-time high level right here come down sit on it this is probably going to be a juicy little trade for some continuation i may even throw some shares at it myself all in all looking very decent on microsoft the best case scenario however however would be if we try for this weekly uh, oops excuse me let me just reset that so if we try for this weekly higher low and maybe start retesting the 420 415 level i know it's a little bit away but if we can see something like this and then set the weekly higher low into further trend this would be such a gorgeous trade opportunity guys around this 415 mark right here would be the ultimate sweet spot for a microsoft swing in my opinion now moving into netflix netflix taking a little bit of a breather after smashing it the last couple of days right absolutely normal daily uptrend clear as day i'm sure everybody can see that right now right so where are we at on Netflix right now? Well, we have our previous um 52 week highs. That's where we're kind of trying to come down into. So this is the best case scenario, guys. If we can set a daily higher low, use this level as support, maybe even hesitate around here for a little bit, let the moving averages catch up all the way up here and then mount a little bit of a rally. That would be absolutely gorgeous for uh, for Netflix, rather. Netflix, the next level that we're looking at for resistance, guys, is the all-time highs. Really nothing much in its way. However, even if Netflix gives up a little bit too much, let's say we break down here and come back down to this level right here, is it that big of a deal, guys? No, because what will we be looking for? Same thing as on a lot of indexes and a lot of big tech names, guys. Just going to be looking for a weekly higher low for that eventual trend continuation. So if we can pull back here, 600 for Netflix, great swing trade location, weekly 12 VMA right here we haven't really lost except for this little earnings mishap right here haven't really lost a 12 VMA guys since the rally in November so that would be a nice little one touch and continuation run trade now moving into Nvidia didn't do any technical analysis on Nvidia when we covered their earnings so let's do that right now so obviously Nvidia right now is going to be well above a thousand dollars let's put a line right here where it's going to be it should be at around a thousand seven for tomorrow right so this is clearly now above our previous all-time highs which were about 969 we've now created a lot of space this is going to be similar to semiconductors right now right so daily uptrend healthy 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 we're going to pull up in this area now if ever Nvidia breaks a little bit higher let's say we even go around a thousand 30,050 and then choose to pull back right where is going to be the likely area of pullback guys you guys guessed it the previous all-time highs right so if we can see something like this move up retest this location right here could be a juicy swing trade opportunity and i will add to my swing trade opportunity guys if we revisit the breakout retest location usually a very high probability trade as of now for the weekly as well the weekly right with a thousand uh seven if we do close a weekly candle up here i mean the weekly uptrend is just going to look completely 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 beautiful gorgeous weekly uptrend no red flags whatsoever i'm just going to be personally looking in terms of the breakout retest trade right for the continuation breakout retest enter the trade right here stops go below this guy right here and then you're just looking to ride this into pretty much 1100 1200 so it could be a very juicy trade opportunity i'll let you guys know when and if i take it now moving on to tesla 
Tesla not having the best day today here, guys, today. 3.48% to the downside. Still within yesterday's candle, though. Yesterday was such a massive day on Tesla, right? 6.5%. Daily uptrend, currently still hunting for the daily higher low right now. Anything above 171.50, daily higher low for further trend continuation. What's good is that we're still above all of your short-term moving averages and still within the context of a daily uptrend, right? What we need to see, however, from the bulls is continued momentum to the upside really get back into this 200 level right here if we can do that guys get back up into the 200 the weekly is going to look really good for a potential weekly uptrend breakout we have not had a weekly uptrend breakout on tesla since last october right and even then we're still in the context of this downtrending channel so step one is re-getting the weekly and then the last step is going to be eventually recapturing this monthly nasty downtrend right monthly downtrends take a long time to reverse, but you can see when we do get them, usually the follow through is quite juicy. So that's what we're gonna be looking out for on Tesla. Still a lot of work for the bulls to do. And obviously guys, if we lose this and head down here, then the level of the bulls absolutely must hold is 160. If we take back too much of the 160 guys, it's just not gonna look the best on the weekly. It'll be taking back too much. And then the best chance the bulls have is maintaining a tightening range, or you just forfeit everything and continuation to the downside, right? Still a lot of trading before then, not gonna speculate too much. As of now, daily bulls still in control. We're gonna watch for the weekly continued momentum to the upside. Now, moving into Palantir, Palantir also not having a bad day, right? Down 0.33%. Palantir just not able to get much momentum going. We'll see if NVIDIA's earnings help Palantir tomorrow or whether or not the stock just continues marching on towards the lows. 20.53, guys, is the line in the sand to watch here. Why? Because if we break that, it'll be daily continued downtrend and also would be, unfortunately, weekly renewal of the downtrend. The bulls had a great attempt prior to earnings at resetting this into a weekly uptrend, just not getting done, getting it done. Still, 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 um, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy pressure here into the lows. If we do lose this here, guys, I still maintain this whole level 20 down to $19. Such a gorgeous trend um, opportunity, guys, because the monthly uptrend is in our favor. Still expecting the monthly higher low for further trend continuation. So I know Palantir has been consolidating here for the better part of the last three months, but that's just longer time frame consolidation. Just understand your bulls are back here in support resistance. Now we're going to use this level as support once again. So I do think it's going to be very tough for the markets to push this one much below 20 and $19. That being said, if the bulls want to resume their control, well, we need a break of 2218, guys. 2218 break would be daily uptrend renewal. And then we'll be looking, can we take out this vicious $23 level, which was previous uh, support, resistance, resistance, right? That's going to be the major level to watch for Palantir. Now, lastly, PayPal. PayPal not having a great day at all today, guys. Nothing really was uh, happening on PayPal stock specifically, right? All of the fintech plays just had a terrible day. PayPal was down. SoFi was down about 1% today as well. Square was down another 5.83% after being down almost 4% yesterday. Square down almost 6% today for no real reason whatsoever here, guys, right? Just fintechs, just not really in favor right now. PayPal, once again, setting up for the daily downtrend crush, unfortunately. So the bull's not able to get it back back below our moving averages right now. And now we're coming into the danger zone, guys. This is the area of support that the bulls cannot lose. If we lose this area, guys, it's not gonna look great at all for your weekly structure. As a matter of fact, if we close this weekly candle below 61.83, it will be a technical, unfortunate weekly downtrend on PayPal once again. After trying to maintain the uptrend and the tightening range now for a better part of the last two months, if we lose this area and close the weekly down into these lows, it'll be weekly downtrend, guys. And you guys know what weekly downtrend means. I hate to say it. It'll be extended monthly consolidation on PayPal once again. So unfortunately, PayPal really at pretty much the do or die point. I hate to say it right now, guys, but that's pretty much the fact of the matter. It is pretty much do or die for PayPal right now. If for some reason we break lower here, guys, it's going to be tough for me to play this one, right? Because I am favoring Square, favoring playing Square over PayPal, just because Square's growth is still happening this year, whereas PayPal is having a bit of a transition year, right? 
I would only be interested in playing PayPal if we can get some short puts down here in the lower $58 range. Because if we break this level right here, guys, I do believe that the continuation will come down into here. And down here, the valuation is a lot better than it is at $68. As a matter of fact, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that is a 15, 16% discount from the highs up here. So that's what I'll be looking for on PayPal myself. So that's pretty much everything I had for you guys in terms of our stocks today and earnings. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Now let's take a very brief look into my portfolio. All right, guys, so taking a look at the portfolio here, I know at a first glance, there's a lot of positions, guys. I don't want to confuse everybody. We've covered these most over the past couple of days here. We're only really going to go over the ones that have a blue dot. Those are the new positions that I initiated today. So starting off, guys, the ones that I closed, we closed the JP Morgan 195 puts at a very decent gain. We got these for about 37 cents. We were able to close them for about 10 cents today. So pretty much 80% profit. Just wanted to free up some capital for a few more earnings trades that we made today. Target also was a trade that I did close at a nice little profit you can see here that we had the 138 strike leading into uh the morning in target even though they dropped about 10 percent we were able to close these midway through the morning for pretty much a 90 percent profit so fairly happy there didn't get burned on another consumer discretionary play fairly happy the one that i did take a loss on though was toll brothers toll brothers unfortunately guys after their earnings um yesterday pretty much they were doing quite okay but on the morning the morning really unraveled for them so my strike was pretty much the 120s i had the 120 puts for friday and it came down into my uh level very very quickly you can see this is the 9 30 opening candle came down to 124 i wanted to let it ride because when it was at 124 with such a violent drop right i wasn't really in profit at all maybe Maybe just a few dollars so i wanted to let it ride and that was a little bit of a mistake could have closed it really close to break even unfortunately guys it came right down in the next 15 minutes right down into my strike price so we had to take pretty much a 2x loss i lost about you know, it's just about $60 on this uh, trade right here. So not the biggest loss, but still a loss that I could have avoided by closing the trade a little bit earlier here. I didn't expect it to come down all the way down here because their earnings weren't that bad, but the company did drop 8.5%. This is one of their worst days, guys, in recent memory for Troll Brothers, at least one of their biggest drops pretty much in the last six months. So very unfortunate, but at least we capped the loss, didn't lose more than we should have. So those are pretty much the ones from yesterday. Now the ones for today. So we made a couple of new plays here, mostly surrounding NVIDIA. Number one, we added to SoFi. If you remember, we only had four contracts leading into yesterday. We added six more. We got about six cents on them. The net, you know, between the ones that I got at five cents, the ones at six cents minus the commission. All in all, guys, we have 10 contracts at $7.00. Five cents, so about fifty dollars in premium. We'll see how SoFi ends. I really like SoFi around seven dollars. It's chilling around there now. We'll see how it ends by Friday, but I like this one. Then we went with a few setups on Nvidia. So we went with the Nvidia call uh, spread right here. I'm not too sure if it's doing it properly. Oh no, it's breaking them up into two. So let me just do let me just do this instead, right? So if we take Nvidia here, I wrote a. I did exactly what I was saying on the video yesterday. We did uh, two things, right? So we did a bull put spread, which just means that we sold the 840 puts and we bought the 835 puts. The net credit between the two guys was about a dollar. So if this stays above all of these strike prices by uh, the expiry here on June 14th, I will collect $200 on these contracts. So far, so good. Nothing much to see here. Just a very, very easy trade to make, in my opinion, because outlaying the capital for a full short put, you know, $883,000 per contract, a little bit much. So I went a little bit cheap here, guys. Just went with two contracts. Then we did also load up two um, bull call debit spreads. So meaning we bought the $1,005 calls and we sold the, the $1,010 calls. So basically our profit is capped, but we got into this trade. It only cost us $1.50. So 150 bucks per contract. We got two of them for about $300 total. And the maximum profit that we stand to make on these is pretty much $500 per uh, contract, right? So $500 times two would be a thousand minus our total cost to enter. 300 bucks the net profit would be about 700 dollars the one thing however guys about credit spreads or even debit spreads is you really need to wait until expiry to get the maximum profit potential 
Now, the best we can do before expiry is you'll probably see about 50% gains. If you see 50% gains in one day, then there's no real need to wait for the rest of the three weeks of the contract for the rest of the 50%. You may as well just take the money and move on to a different trade, right? So we'll see these. This is probably what I'm going to do for these um, uh, these put contracts right here, right? The put credit spread. But in terms of the bull call debit spread, we're only at about $1,007 in the after hours right now. It's not really going to move far enough. If I really go deep, deep, deep in the money, if we go up to 1,050, 1,060, 1,070, I may be able to find 50% profit on these contracts prior to the expiry, right? That's when I may close this trade. If not, we may just wait until the full expiry. So we'll see how this one goes specifically. All in all, looking very decent for those two trades. Uh, then what else did we have? Do we have anything else? Oh yeah, we wrote a bunch of, we did a bunch of stuff on Elf Beauty, right? So we also wrote some uh, Elf Beauty, right? We took a gamble. We went with um, uh, two week or, or rather a month out call options on Elf Beauty. I was fairly bullish, guys, and I really love this company. So it's pretty much a case of no risk, no reward, right? I'm starting to increase the risk now with the overall bullish sentiment in the market, inflation coming down, interest rates coming down later on in the year. You're going to see me start to play a little bit more call options aggressively. So I went with the 185s. 185s is just above this level of resistance right here. And if the earnings would have really smashed it, we probably would have been up there right away. All I'll leave it, I'll let it, you know, I'll let it marinate, as they say, and I still think that this does have a good, good, good uh, chance of turning a profit for me, so we will hold these, these are the June 28, 185 calls, picked them up for $5, a little bit rich, but then again, the implied volatility on Elf Beauty is always relatively on the high side. Then we also have two put contract earnings leading into earnings as well, these are sold puts, so we would buy the shares if they go down there, right? We wrote the 128 prior to earnings for about $1.25, those will probably be worthless by tomorrow even if they are for next friday not this friday the one after we'll probably be able to close these at 80 90 profit tomorrow and the 123s by tomorrow morning these are for this friday this should be absolutely worthless so we'll be able to collect a nice cool probably you know 170 180 dollars on this elf beauty play and then this money that we collect will be used to offset the cost of this call option as well so looking fairly good and the only other trades that we took guys um am i missing a few yeah we took some end phase right so we took some end phase just because I don't buy it, guys. Enphase had a heck of a rally today, was up almost 11% at one point. So we went with some puts, guys. I went with some puts for the Friday close. Went with the 110s, which is right at the bottom end of this support range down here. We'll see how the company reacts, guys. But usually a lot of these one-day rallies on Enphase do get met with some heavy sell-offs thereafter, right? So I'm just looking to play the volatility on this one. I took four put options here. Cost me about 25 cents each. Total cost about a hundred dollars right so really not breaking the bank on this one we'll see what happens i'll hold them through friday but if we get a nice little drop on this stock tomorrow i may be able to cash out on this puts maybe make something like a 2x maybe even 1.5x we'll see what we can get if not we'll just lose a hundred dollars trying to make a gamble on that one right i always try to keep my gambles very very small guys right and the more high conviction plays you'll see me throw five hundred thousand bucks into them um and the other one guys well we took some shares on nvidia right when nvidia had a little bit of a dip after its earnings i was watching it uh, while the earnings were being released we had a little bit of an initial dip here if, let's see if i can find it right is it showing me the after hours right now um let's go back in time right here so the dip was this one right here so we had the earnings come out i was not able to catch this flash move to the downside right basically just shot down shot back up in a minute wasn't able to catch that one but when we did have a little bit of a retrace here i had a line established right here guys that line has not pretty much moved that was your pretty much all-time high previous line right so that is why I chose that one when we retested this area right here using it as support for the first time in the after hours I went with five shares I went a little bit light I was hesitating between five and ten shares I told myself I'll buy five at 965 and if it dips back down to about 955 at another five limit uh, five shares on limit at 955 did not get filled guys it went down to 959 and did not fill me and then just ran away so unfortunately guys didn't end up with the full size position that I wanted to, but still happy that I got those five shares at 965. We'll ride those guys. We're pretty much going to ride those. A little bit of a swing trade here, maybe into $1,100 range, right? So very, very decent position there. All in all, great day trading, guys. That's pretty much everything that I had for you guys today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, consider dropping a like on the video. Would appreciate it for the growth of the channel. And also consider subscribing to the channel too. We do these videos every Monday through Friday after the close so appreciate it if you would subscribe to us and join us for many many more and lastly if you have any questions at all guys please feel free to leave them down below in the comments if you have any trade ideas 
options plays you want me to give my uh, perspective on a certain stock anything you want guys leave it down below in the comments and i'll usually answer you within the first 24 hours so take care guys happy trading tomorrow i'll see you tomorrow after the close peace